Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here. And once again, welcome to the channel. Today's game is anticipation of what is waiting around the corner. The champion showdown is just about to kick off in Missouri. Many chess enthusiasts can't wait to tune in. It's always great news when this guy joins in. Many people say he's the greatest player to have walked on the planet. And many also say he's no match to the Radio World Champion. Gary will join in to play against the next generation of players. He surprised them last time and will probably surprise them this time around too. If you are waiting for Gary to play against Magnus, do not hold your breath. The only instance he will get to see Magnus play Gary is in the Fisher Random type of setup. Only there these two will meet. If there is something else planned, I will try and let you know. All the details about this forthcoming tournament and everything you need to know about it can be found here on this link on the top right of your screen. What I want to do today is to go back in time to 2016 and revisit one game in particular between Gary and Wesley So Everyone was so over the moon to have a chance not only to meet Gary, but also play against him. Gary at the time said, you know what? I have nothing really to lose. These guys are professional. And I'm not. So even if I lose, I would have a really good strong excuse. Please don't hack me on what I just said. Using the strict definition of the word professional. Gary Kasparov is not a professional chess player. He was, but no longer. And I would get a lot of stick for what I just said, but before you start firing at the messenger, please, please, learn your definitions. Okay, let's come back to 2016, to the Ultimate Blitz Challenge, and this game is what you would expect to see when these two meet again. <coughs> we have Wesley taking south of the board. And given in the previous game, he really obliterated Gary with what is said to have been the game of the tournament. Wesley has started up in just the same way as he did in that game. So this is the game from 29 April 2016. Just to pinpoint this game, this is a one from round 16.2. It is unusual, but not rare, for Wesley to go for this Ritzy opening. The Ritzy, in fact, or Ritzy openings, are the most robust ones there are. What you see can easily transpose into anything. Gary responded with this move, and with Wesley going right through the centre, Gary brings out his bishop. d4, d6, and now c4, and this opening, you see, is quite sharp. Neither Wesley nor Gary are strangers to what you see. Gary normally would follow mainline variations, and there is no reason to deviate. Gary applied this pin, the bishop came out, and with Gary preparing this knight, we have a modern defence in play, with the Tartakova system in place, and no doubt Gary go for it. And you know, he does. Wesley opted for this avenue of play, and yes, here he comes. Gary shot off with this guy, and how different this game to the one they played, the previous one, when Wesley still had south of the board. One thing for sure, Gary has played this opening with both colours. He expected this knight to be attacked, but does Wesley go for him? He does, and why shouldn't he? 
Night back to safety is the most expected type of response. In this season's Top Shots Engine Championship, Premier League, and in one game in particular, we saw the same exact opening. The engine here went for night before, but let me be honest, it was not the same exact opening. The night came to be for after the king had castled. If you go for a night before, as we see here, you may also want to give up the game. This check drops the night, and it's as good as game over. So, in this position, okay, we got the knight back to safety. Wesley rushed to get his king to safety, and with Gary wanted to do exactly the same, he got this knight to enter the game. Gary's position on the king's side is super strong, but is he overprotecting here? If I forgot to mention something, this is a blitz game. Wesley wants to disturb the equilibrium in the centre and goes for this pawn push. If you take and take, if the bishops also disappear, Gary will castle and the game will continue with probably Wesley having a superior position. Only because these two central pawns are strong enough to hold control of the centre. Blitz games do you expect to see it all. When this pawn was thrusted here, what did Gary do? He too got the king to safety. And with Wesley going for it, when this pawn was eliminated too, an open line has broken. And it's who can make an effective use of it. Open files are very interesting in any game. Wesley is not a person who likes his pieces pinned. And who does? So finally, he gets a chance to hunt after this bishop. Do you hand over this bishop to the knight? Or do you just hold on to this bishop for another rainy day? Gary backed off to this spot. Or let me just correct myself. Gary didn't back off, but his bishop backed off here. A key move in this position is what you get to see Wesley play. It was his rugby position in 2 one he gets him ready to come into the game. He gets his bishop ready to reposition and also allows for this knight on d2 to go places. So quite a solid response to go for this rook move. And not first sight, it doesn't show to do much. This move is key. Gary being away from the game as a professional for a very long time can still throw in some very strong punches. He has beaten Wesley before, so he's always a very serious threat. Everyone knows this. So, he went for this extremely strong response, and he's really ready to disturb the peace. His B5 stops many things. So, let's see how Wesley plans to deal with this Gary initiative. He went for this bishop repositioning. Gary, in turn, Rerouted his knight here. And let's see what prompted Gary to go for something like this. Where is his knight going next? And what is he doing on c8? When Wesley shot off with this pawn push, you immediately know what he has in mind. Another file is most likely to open wide open. We Gary knowing full well what is going on. He prepared this rook move. With Wesley going for it, Gary simply covers. What continues is very basic. These two pawns disappeared, and Wesley again goes for it. He came up with this bishop repositioning, and though there is nothing going on in games like these, it's the element of surprise that really counts. One idea is to just attack Mr. Bishop. This bishop backs off. And this pawn now is getting an extra tempo. Knowing this pawn from b5 to b4 also means this light square on c4 now becomes available and south may benefit as a result. Just an idea, guys. Just an idea. When this bishop appeared on the rim, Gary positioned his knight. It's not to protect an otherwise protected pawn, but to allow for this guy in F7 to make his way into the game. 
with Wesley realizing this, pawn on b5 is able to force his bishop back, even for something to stop this. The move that stops the attack on the bishop is this response Wesley executed. Gary still went for this move we suggested earlier, and his intentions are clear. He wants to break up Wesley's center with this rook lift to the sixth. Gary didn't seem to be bothered. He rerouted his bishop here. And this is very atypical of Gary. If anyone knows how important this bishop is on g7, it has to be the one person who made a career from positioning his dark color bishop on g7. Was Gary going it risky? And if so, why? Wesley got rid of this pawn. Gary captured using his other bishop, but it appears Wesley had it all worked out. He chased after this bishop. This bishop backed off for the second time running to the same outpost. And now with Wesley picking up this knight and placing him right into this outpost, what he achieves is to mount the pressure on this guy that is parked on d6. We are not just looking at this guy on d6. There is a potential for nice sacrifice by removing this pawn on e5. And when North captures, this bishop can be offered to have this rook eliminated. Question to ask is if all this is worth a hassle and whether South is handing over too much material just to see this unfold. So let me tell you this. If you remove this bishop using the king, this will be an excellent deal for south. And because this bishop on h6 is most likely to be used to capture this bishop, Wesley may be shooting blanks. Okay, let's pretend to see how the game unfolded. Gary can easily opt for this having your play. When the rooks come off, the game continues. Now, this may be a position for beginners to consider. Why doesn't rook b6 work? And why should you avoid it? This is a problem, guys. And north, in one word, is busted. Isn't that two words? Okay. Knight b6 is worse cause. You can easily remove the pawn. And if both knights come off, this nasty fork on the rooks, it's also going to be the end of the game. So, how do you choose to play it? This pawn on d6 cannot be saved. With this in mind, this is how Gary played it. This initiative stops the knight from eliminating this pawn on e5. And if Wesley was planning to offer something, this now is not going through either. Can anyone work out the dynamics of this bishop making it into this outpost on f4? Find the missing link. And of course, the link is no more missing. Look carefully, guys. Can I ask you to find it in your own time? Or can I ask you to at least pause? And I will come back to this in just one second. Okay, let's do it. If you take, 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 and take, this is the initiative you're looking for. It's a two-prong attack. There is the right way to play it, and there is another way. Take the wrong turn, and you're finished. Do you save the knight or the rook, and why? There's only one right way to play it. This is it. And over the rook or this bishop and through this time of elimination, this position may look equal. So when Gary came up with this bishop repositioning right into f4, he meant business for someone who's not said to play the game as much as he used to. This is a big move to go for. The verdict, Gary is not rusty, and he's never likely to be. So Wesley here, d6, 
didn't even bother. He got this picture into the diagonal. The queen reposition here, and we're mostly going for queen repositioning to this outpost here. Gary was out of moves. How do we know? This is how he played it. This king reposition to the edge of the board says a lot. Queen b2 creating a type of pin. <laughs> Gary seems to slightly panic. He picked up his king and takes him back to the square. He just stood on. Queen to the rim, but to this pawn thrust. Gary has a problem. He's closed in. And will be very happy to find a way out. Why did I say this? It's because of this pawn on d6. He's a sitting duck. Wesley got rid of him. This knight was arrested. The bishop got rid of him. Gary then captured this nasty bishop and with takes in this way. Takes and takes. Wesley's up by full pawn. But Houston, we have a problem. I used to say Chuck Norris is the only one able to come out of these situations in one piece until someone said, you know what, Bruce Lee had beaten him. That is true. Not the two were quite close friends. I couldn't argue with that. Gary, as things stand, has a bishop that is under attack. But where was this bishop to go? The answer is nowhere. So the answer was not to cover him. Gary moved this pawn and created his own attack. Wesley captured, and Gary being Gary, was like a vicious snake, full of venom. This is how he played it. The continuation looks simple, but how would you play it when blitzing? The bishop came off, the knight came off, this pawn eliminates it. There is now a two pawns deficit, is there not? There's still many things that can happen. If you are not careful, now, Gary came in with his attack on not one but two pieces and creates a real situation with Wesley. How on earth do you deal with a position such as this one? With one rock on the seventh, is anyone considering if it's worth dropping this bishop on a three to get the two brothers on the seventh floor? Get rid of the bishop, come in with this check, and with the king able to reach this spot on f8, because of the presence of this rook on f3, south is not able to make any real progress. So wisely enough, Wesley didn't go for this, but reciprocated the attack on this bishop. With takes and takes, Gary grabs hold of this pawn too, and what Gary has achieved is to reduce the pawn deficit. Has he got enough to turn things around? There are two passes, but one pawn that is far more dangerous than any other one is this guy on b5. Okay, maybe the same can be said about this pawn on d5. So whatever happens, this is a tricky one. Wesley pushed on with this pawn. Gary went for it. So he chose this avenue of play, and without delay, Wesley opts for this rubber positioning. He's making way for the pawn to advance, and as things stand, it looks like this game is over. Gary too had his own plan. Any ideas how he reacted? He went for it too. King up the board, chasing shadows really. Let to Mr. Rook to back off to the last. And again, via this Rook repositioning, this ending is trickier than you think. Rook in to attack this pawn, led to this tower response from Wesley. And this is a moment where Gary appears to blunder. Let me show you what he did, and you tell me if Gary blunders. This is a move he went for, pretty much allowing the removal of this guy. We are not a check. 
I think we're to go for it. Are you possibly able to work out this one? Wesley did remove this guy. Gary picks up his king and places him to the very corner of the board. In with another check. The king returns to g8. Wesley repeats a check. This time, Gary gets his king to move in the other direction. With this response from Wesley, this is where the game came to a close. Both agreed to a draw, and this is something you don't get to see often. Wesley is not a person who can let anyone escape, and yet on this occasion, Gary is the one who comes out of this one in one piece. After King G8, it should have been the end, really. Undoubtedly, both must have been in time trouble, but things could have ended so differently. Can we fill in the missing gaps? I don't see why not. What does this rook move do? And what is wrong with it? Nada. If you get rid of this pawn, come in with this check. The king is forced west. He wants you to go for this avenue play. With two more rooks departing. You tell me how it all ends. If rook d3, after this pawn push, there is nowhere on earth South can ever lose this one. And yet Wesley, who is notoriously strong with these types of positions, chose to end the game in a dead draw. This is a problem with blitz games. Time is the essence of everything, really. And this is why most of the time, even if you have a much better position than your position, when you get flagged, that will be it. There are cases, of course, where you can claim a draw. But this, what you see here, is an open and shut case. And yet it happened. Gary comes out of this one in one piece. And this is one game which could have ended decisively. So with Gary ready to take part in this year's tournament, let's see what he has prepared. More to come, of course. So until soon, everyone. Your chess puzzle are here. And whatever you do, you know what's coming. Safety first.